And let's now just close our eyes and to begin to breathe as we enter into our meditation. Just continuing to breathe and feel your body relax. As we enter into our meditation together today, I ask you to ask yourself a question. The question of, who am I? Who am I? Who are we? we begin to evoke our power of imagination as we take a journey together today in our meditation. As we begin to visit different cultures and different races, asking ourselves the question of, who am I? We stare into the mirror and we don't see our own face. We see the face, the physical face of someone who is perhaps perceived as different than we are. A person of a different skin color, perhaps. Looking into their eyes, the eyes that aren't really so different than our own. And we ask ourselves, who am I and who are you? And then we remember, I am you and you are me. For we are one. You look again in the mirror and you see someone new appear. Someone with a religion or a spiritual practice that's different than your own. Perhaps someone of the Muslim faith, the Islamic faith, something different maybe than your own. looking again into their eyes and again asking that question, who am I and who are you? Ah, but then we remember, I am you and you are me because we are one.
And yet still you look in the mirror again and there's another different face looking back at you, a face other than perhaps the one you're used to seeing in the mirror. Someone that is perhaps from a country other than your own. Perhaps they speak a different language than your native language. You stare deeply into each other's eyes and you feel that connection. Asking again the questions of who am I and who are you? You each chuckle to yourselves as again you remember, I am you and you are me. Because we are one. And as we prepare to enter into our moment of silence, I invite you to allow yourself to feel this oneness in this connection. This connection that each and every one of us shares as we share this planet, the resources on this planet, as we share hopes and dreams, the want to have a better life, the want to have the life that we dream of and envision. We're not really so different. We are one. I invite you to just allow yourself to feel that oneness as we sit together in our moment of silence. And as you bring your awareness back to the present moment, I invite you to again inquire, who am I? And you will find the answer. Look at a tree. From one seed arises a huge tree. From it comes numerous seeds. each one of which in its turn grows into a tree. No two fruits are alike, yet 
It is one life that throbs in every particle of the tree. So it is the same Atman everywhere. Let's just breathe into this moment of unity, this moment of oneness. Just allowing it to wash over every cell, every pore, every inch of our body. Filling us with light and love and truth. Filling us with the oneness that we are. And we joyously shout, so it is. Namaste. And let's join together as we sing our new Lord's Prayer. Thank you, Pete. By the way, Pete's got a really cool, uh, the next special music's kind of a really cool uh, video that Pete put together, and I, I enjoyed watching it, so I think you will too. So if you plan on jumping off right after the talk, hold on for a little bit because you're not going to want to miss the next special music. So anyway, back to the topic at hand. So I think by now most of us probably know that we're attending a Unity Church service this morning. And if not, you're attending a Unity Church service this morning. But I do want to you know, kind of start with a question. Um, anyone ever really think about the namesake of our church organization, Unity? Does anyone ever move beyond the name a little bit and think, you know, what is it that Unity truly stands for and how can we practice unity? So I looked up the definition of unity in Webster's Dictionary and found that it defines unity as the quality or state of not being multiple, oneness, and the condition of harmony. So I can get on board with those definitions. I was pretty excited when I saw that Webster's Dictionary defines unity as oneness. It sounds like a lot, like mostly a lot of what we teach here at most unity organizations, doesn't it? Especially if you have visited other unity churches. Um, you know, in, some of them are a little bit different. You know, some unity churches are very biblical based, you know, while well, well, some aren't at all. Some you won't even see anything about the Bible. Or some are a combination of both and then some are more one than the other or, you know, one more kind of Eastern or more biblical at any given time. Just kind of depends on what's going on. But the one common thread that all of them seem to have is that they all go back to our core spiritual teachings. But let's think about it for a moment. What are those core spiritual teachings? You know, some of us have attended Unity Churches for a long time and perhaps don't really even know what they are or tend to kind of forget about them over the course of time. But what are our principles, our core principles, and how can they help us take our namesake of unity out into the world and implement it and practice it in everything that we do? Now, these should, the core principles, the Unity 5 principles, should sound familiar to those who recently took my membership class because we touched on them. We didn't have a lot of time to go into a lot of depth, which kind of made me think about, you know, maybe we should. Right now, we you know, we're before our book study, let's kind of go into these in a little more depth. Now, each one of these is a lesson in and of itself, but I'd like to start to begin to delve a bit further into them and talk about how we can use them to be and to live our namesake of unity. So today, I'd like to start with the first principle, which is God is all there is and present everywhere. God is all there is and present everywhere. So is this stating that God is like some kind of a Santa Claus? I mean, it's always been said, you know, that Santa Claus is living in the North Pole, but Santa Claus is always watching. So here's this, the only guy that brings us toys every year, but also sure seems to be present everywhere, right? I mean, if he's always watching, he's present everywhere. But do the same attributes apply to God? Is God perhaps somewhere out there making a list of who's naughty and who's nice? And checking it twice, I had to add that in there. But, but is there a God that we can blame when things don't go our way? Well, I must not have been doing my best because, you know, 
God didn't answer my prayer. You know, and I have a confession to make here myself. Um, you know, I kind of found it easier when I could just blame God. You know, going back to my old Baptist upbringing, you know, I could just blame God. You know, anybody else coming from a more traditional religion or practice that thinks that, you know, oh, you know, or they thought that was raised that way, well, I just, you know, blame God. Then anytime something went away other than I hoped it would go, I just blame God. But is it really that easy? Unity co-founder Charles Fillmore once said, let us remember that by describing God with words in our human way, we are but stating in the lisping syllables of the child that which in its maturity the mind still only faintly grasps. Yet man or woman may know God and become the vehicle and expression of God, the unlimited fount of life, Health, love, and light. So enter the first of the Unity 5 principles. Principle number one, God is all there is and present everywhere. It doesn't mention only when we are naughty or nice. Not only when we, what we pray for seems to manifest. It doesn't mention that God is only present then. But everywhere and all the time. Now, the human mind, you know, I'm not a scientist, but I, you know, I think most of us have been around long enough to know that the human mind strives to make sense out of everything. You know, I learned that, that, you know, if some people, if you're tuning in for the first time or you don't know me well, I like to conduct paranormal investigations. And, you know, I learned that during some of those paranormal investigations, you know, I find sometimes that there are surprise looks that people give me when they tell me of their paranormal experiences and the relief that they see when they find that I believe them, you know, they'll have surprised looks on their faces. It's because their experiences can't always be explained away in terms that their minds can just easily rationalize right away. You know, as much as I'd like to tell some of them, yeah, that door is opening and closing on its own due to a draft in your house, it's not always the, the answer that can be the most easily explained. But the mind reaches and it searches for what initially appears to be the simplest of answers because it's usually the most simple to grasp, at least at first. So explaining a God out there somewhere that is only around when we are deserving or that we can use as a scapegoat when things don't go the way we think they should, is easier to grasp. Again, at least initially. It's sometimes easier to grasp than to try to really accept that we are indeed all a part of this God source. That it is us and that we are it. The Bhagavad Gita states, By me is this entire universe pervaded. All things are in me, and I in them. Know that as the mighty wind blowing everywhere rests in the sky, all created beings rest in me. I am the father, the mother, the supporter, and the grandsire of the universe. So it may sometimes be difficult for the human part of us, the human mind, to grasp at first. But it's not so difficult for your, truer be, for your truer self to grasp. It doesn't have to actually grasp it at all. It doesn't have to try to rationalize it or make sense of it because it already knows. That part of you already knows. It's almost kind of like doing something that you tell yourself you shouldn't do, right? And I'm talking small things here, like putting a glass of water you know, on the edge of the counter when you know you have a cat in the house. Just as you put the glass there, this little voice tells you, you know, you shouldn't do this because the cat could very well knock it off. Yet you put the glass there anyway, and what happens? The cat knocks it off. It's because your intuition, your higher self knows. That voice, that part of you, that is God knows. We sometimes just don't want to listen. But you may be sitting here and thinking, well, Evan, okay, you know, I'm with you so far. 
But if God is all there is and truly everywhere, including a part of me, why, pray tell, do bad things still appear to happen? Couldn't we prevent those things from happening if all of this were true? Well, that's a good question. You know, remember that book that was so popular at one time, um, Why Do Bad Things Happen to Good People or something like that? I think it was written by David Arnold, although, you know, I think there's a lot of different versions of it out there. But, I mean, we can look around us at any given time and some of us can wonder, you know, where exactly is this God presence in all of this? You know, we've got domestic terrorism on the rise right now in our country, you know, promoted by people who are supposed to be leaders. You know, we've got COVID going on that's worldwide right now. We've still got children in cages. Where is God in all of that? Even if this God presence is inside of us and we are a part of it and it is us. And we could briefly, we could probably discuss this one over the course of several weeks, but I'd like to touch on it at least briefly today. If God is indeed everywhere, why does it seem so absent in certain situations? You know, I'm going to discuss some of what Reverend Unity Minister Reverend Ellen Devonport mentions um, in her book, The Five Principles. So if you've got one, you might want to dust it off, and you can read some of these on pages uh, 26 and 27 in that book. But the first one that she mentions talks about our free will and how in that free will we make mistakes. Or, you know, I like to sometimes refer to them as opportunities. So whichever way you look at it, a mistake or an opportunity. But here we define sin as missing the mark. And sometimes we can miss it by a little bit, can't we? You know, just a little bit. Sometimes we make a few decisions that give us that false sense of separation from God which is what unity considers a sin, that false sense of separation from God or missing the mark. You know, choosing to look around and treating some of our fellow beings as less than human, that's one way that this is done, that we can really miss that mark, isn't it? And when we do, we seem to take that word unity and we shove it to the side because we're seeing and we're creating a separation that doesn't even really exist. We see a separation of oneness which isn't real and it's not truth. So we miss the mark and we fall just short of the intended target of oneness. We project this separation from God that simply doesn't exist. Remember, God is present everywhere all the time. But it's also a choice. We've got free will. We can make the choice to move past that way of, of thinking that view of viewing other, some other people out there as separate from ourselves. Now, Reverend Ellen also mentions that we can't always see the big picture. You know, and this is true in a lot of ways. Maybe a relationship once ended and you thought it was the end of the world. Yet one year later, you met the person that you married and you look back with fondness and are happy that that other relationship ended. It's whatever the case is. You know, we can't always see the big picture when it's happening. Reverend Ellen states, events have meaning we do not understand. Although later we might see the gifts that were brought to us through the most difficult time in our lives. So to me, this kind of goes along with having faith, doesn't it? There are things that happen sometimes that just flat out don't seem to make any sense when they're happening. Even COVID, you know. Maybe it's happening right now and doesn't make a lot of sense to most of us. But it doesn't mean that one day we won't look back or that generations won't look back and see and find that something much more was at play, the big picture. And it can be with anything, really. You know, jobs that don't work out the way we'd hoped. You know, the relationship that I mentioned earlier, maybe even an illness of the body. Proverbs 3, 5 of the Bible tells us, Trust in the Lord with all your heart and lean not on your own understanding. So sometimes it's not for us maybe to understand in the moment. Sometimes we might even be able to understand it, but it doesn't mean that we can't release and trust the process still even though it might not make any sense in that moment. 
Another thing we can realize when the God source seems absent is that we are creating our world. And we're doing it through our level of consciousness at any given time. This is another one of our unity principles that we'll get into over the next couple of weeks. But I at least wanted to address it a little bit now. You know, our thoughts, our words, and our feelings, these things are currently creating the world around us. We speak through any of these things, and the universe is responding. You know, these things, thoughts, feelings, and words start to give form, to give shape, and to manifest through whatever our level of consciousness is at any given time. You know, our level of consciousness can change from day to day. But sometimes it's important to take a step back when it seems as if the God light within you has dimmed or even grown dark. This is an opportunity to re-examine your consciousness. You know, has it been low or has it been high? And if it's been low and we aren't seeing those things that we want to see in our world, how can we begin to lift that consciousness? You know, and you've heard me say this before, and I'm going to say it again because it's so very important. It always starts with an awareness. When we're able to step back for a second and say, well, you know, I do start every day off with saying I don't have enough time to do everything that needs to be done. I just know that I'm going to be overwhelmed. Okay, but maybe it's no wonder that I truly am feeling overwhelmed every day. You know, I'm manifesting that into my life with thinking about it and saying it and feeling it every morning. So that's what's going to come back around. So we start with examining our words, thoughts, and feelings each day. It doesn't mean that undesirable things aren't going to happen. It doesn't mean that we're not going to experience things in our lives that happen that we don't see as good in the moment. But it can help set the tone of our consciousness and how we'll be able to handle those things we see as undesirable when they do happen. Life is all consciousness. And it really is up to each one of us to decide how high or how low our consciousness is going to be. Because we always always have the option of rising it up to a higher level. It may not always be up here, but that's okay. It starts with being aware. And we don't know what other people's spiritual journey is during this lifetime. You know, maybe a person has chosen this incarnation to to kind of shake up the status quo a little bit. You know, I remember when I worked in the hospital while in the military, a woman used to come in to work there and She was born without a a left arm from the elbow down. And one of the nurses used to always say, you know, oh, bless her heart. You know, it's a Texas thing maybe, but used to always say, bless her heart after that woman would leave work every day. And I used to ask myself, why? It certainly didn't seem to bother the woman. And the woman that used to say, bless her heart, how did she know what this woman's journey was? You know, how did she feel that this woman... Um, felt that she needed her heart blessed. What made her think that? The woman, she, to me, she seemed to be one of the happiest people I'd met. And I never once recalled her walking around saying, I wish I'd been born with an entire arm. Maybe she did, maybe she didn't, but regardless, I had no idea as to what her spiritual journey was. You know, maybe she eventually crossed paths with someone who'd lost theirs in an accident and she taught them that he or she could still live a full life. The point is, we don't know, and that's okay. We just have to know and to trust that God really is there and present everywhere. Present within you, present within me, and present everywhere. So today I'd like to end with a a small meditation. You know, we talk a lot about different things during our talks sometimes, But sometimes I feel like a little meditation at the end might really kind of help it stick a little bit and help maybe um, reach into our awareness a little bit more. So if you'd just indulge me and just close your eyes for just a moment. And let's breathe for just a beautiful present moment.
Let's just breathe on the following words. I enter into the stillness to align myself with the one mind. The one presence that permeates all of creation. I feel myself as a part of this creation connected to all of nature. I am both the light and the darkness. I am the oceans and the land. I am the rocks and the trees, the fish and the birds, the beasts of the earth, and I am one with every human being on the planet. In this oneness, I sense the order of all things. I feel the divine love that moves in me and in every molecule of the cosmos. I know the divine intelligence that is the foundation of all that is or ever will be. I am one with all. And let's just breathe and just allow that to really just soak in. I am one with all. And just a big cleansing inhale and an audible exhale. Oh. And you may open your eyes when you're ready. So today I'd like to end with, end with a reading from Rainer Maria Rilke. This is just a small little excerpt from Letters to a Young Poet. I want to beg you, dear friend, as well as I can, to have patience with everything that remains unsolved in your heart. Try to love the questions themselves. Namaste. And now that second special music that you don't want to miss. <laughs>